Shall we join our hands to God and praise Him? <clears throat> you may be seated. What a joy it is to be in His presence and, uh, and we praise God for who He is and for all His goodness and uh, the things what He is doing in our lives. And we are so, uh, as I said, we are so privileged to be in His presence. And this morning, it's a great privilege for me to bring the Word of God to you. And uh, if uh, some of you, if you don't know me, my name is Yashwant. I serve in this church as missions pastor. And uh, so glad to see you all this morning with uh, beautiful faces and, you know, uh, and, and nice smiles. And we, you know, praise God. Once again, <coughs> for this opportunity. Let's turn our Bibles to Psalm chapter 23. It's a very familiar psalm. <coughs> I wanted to speak to you this morning. Uh, we all know and uh, in fact we all know all the six verses that are there in this particular chapter. And we also know that David is the author of this psalm. But uh, you know, we don't know exactly when David wrote this psalm. And you know, many scholars believe that David wrote it during his kingship around um, 1000 BC to 993 BC. And some uh, also, uh, some experts also argue that David wrote this during the la later days of his kingship because you know, of uh, its you know, nostalgic way of how he wrote the psalm. <coughs> but anyways, let's not worry about when did he wrote. Let's learn beautiful life lessons from this psalm. Uh, if you have Bibles with you, you can open your Bibles and read along with me. I would like to read from uh, <coughs> verse 1 through 6. The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right path for his name's sake. Even though when I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness, your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. When we look into these six chapters, <coughs> this entire chapter talks about very important uh, things that we need to remember. And, um, uh, you know, and as, as we study these six verses, let's, let me give you five important observations and then we will uh, I, I, I just want to ponder on one word where I just wanted to speak to you and uh, you know, encourage you and help you how we can be strong in the midst of the darkest days in our lives. <coughs> um, <coughs> number one, <coughs> David starts his psalm saying, Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. And which means we need shepherd. <coughs> Jesus also talks in uh, John chapter 10. My sheep will listen to my voice and I know them and they will follow me and I will give them eternal life as a gift. And nobody can ever, you know, uh, take away my sheep from me. So God, we know that we are his sheep and God is calling us as his sheep and he's our shepherd. And we need shepherd in our lives. You know, we like to think ourselves as self-sufficient sometimes. I know. <clears throat> but that is uh, not just a reality. Even if we reject God, we need, you know, mentors in our lives. We need teachers in our lives. We need uh, encouragers in our lives. We need, you know, sympathizers in our life. But God is the perfect version of all these things wherever, whereas humans are. Flawed. Yes, isn't it? Humans are just humans. They have flaws in them. But a shepherd is a protector. A shepherd is a provider. He's a guide. The one who is always with us. 
and he's he's our assurance a constant caregiver and faithful and true no person on earth can measure up to that as our shepherd whom we are serving this morning and we need shepherd secondly rest is essential we all are busy people for some 24 hours would you know are not enough for us to actually plan our day isn't it so we are busy people but uh, david is telling to us stop rest is essential he makes me lie down in green pastures he leads me beside quiet waters so we cannot go on forever we need time to rest and god is you know god has designed us you know to take uh, rest as well as for work also so <clears throat> we need rest rest is essential thirdly we need spiritual restoration he refreshes my soul he guides me along the right paths for his name's sake you know we all encounter you know demanding times in our lives and you know we can be we can become discouraged or tired or weak in our faith and um, we surely need to renew our spirits where we can renew our spirits only in the presence of god so we need spiritual restoration and as he follows you know writing this psalm the fourth verse says even though when i walk through the darkest valley i will fear no evil and you are with me your rod and your staff they comfort me trials are ine- inevitable troubles are inevitable so some some dark times in our lives are short some are long but we need to remember that we will face trials we will talk about it a little later i just want to ponder on this verse and talk from this verse and as we as we read we also see that we need god's presence in our lives wherever we are we need god's presence surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life and i will dwell in the house of the lord forever so when we look compile the, 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 this whole chapter this, these are the five very important observations that we can see but as i told you chap uh, was 4 uh, david says even though when i walk through the darkest valley i will fear no evil this word talks about the deepest troubles and problems that looks like the deepest valley i don't know how many of you have experienced those kind of valleys i don't know if you are experiencing those kind of valleys right now and uh, you may experience those valleys in the future or whatever it may be let's uh, talk about our valley experiences the topic today is the valley experiences um <clears throat> your 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 problems your your valley experience may look like a uh, financial crisis or joblessness or broken relationships or or broken marriages or or even if you're praying for children but struggling with infertility i don't know your inner struggles with sin addictions problems uh, you know in your workplace problem with your boss feeling lonely or you know even feeling rejected or struggling with procrastination i don't know what is your deepest valley that you are going through in your in your life but let me you know <coughs> give you five truths about the valley of uh, darkness we all need to remember that and we will see how david responded to the valley experiences that he had gone through the first truth is this valley experiences are inevitable as i told you before <coughs> every christian will have to go through the valley of darkness these experiences are inevitable <coughs> jesus talks about this in john chapter 16 verse 33 <coughs> i have told you these things so that in me you may have peace in this world you will have trouble what you will have you will have troubles you will have problems you will face problems but take heart i have overcome the world <laughs> jesus himself is talking to us do not worry whatever problem you are facing that you will face in this world because there are problems there will be the deepest valleys in your life so you we need to remember that so rather than complaining to god of the problems that we face 
we submit to them in order to learn some beautiful lessons out of those you know, problems and situations. They are like tests, a spiritual test. So values are inevitable, truth number one. The secondly, they are unpredictable. The value experience that you are facing or you may face or you, are, or you, have, also, or you have already gone through, those are unpredictable. We will face them all of a sudden. And uh, the greatest uh, person I just wanted to show you this morning is Job. We all know about Job, right? So I just want to remind uh, about him once again. And, and the greatest, deepest value that he had gone through. Let me read a couple of scriptures, Job chapter 1. We will see the introduction of Job and how uh, wealthy he was. In uh, words 1, Job chapter 1, from verse 5. In the land of Uz there lived a man whose name was Job. This man was blameless and upright. He feared God and shunned evil. This is his character. He was bl blame blameless, he was upright, and also God, a man who fears God. And verse 2, he had seven sons and three daughters. He got ten children. <coughs> and he owned 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, 500 yoke of oxen, and 500 donkeys. And had a large number of servants. He was the greatest man among all the people of the East. That was his state at that time. And uh, he's, he's the richest man in, in, uh, in the world at that time, at that point of time. And his sons used to hold feasts in their homes on their birthdays, and they would invite their three sisters to eat and drink with them. When a period of feasting um, had run its course, Job would, Job would uh, make arrangements for them to be purified. Early in the morning, he would sacrifice a burnt offering for each of them, thinking, perhaps my children have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. This was Job's regular custom, to pray and give offering. So Job is a perfect guy, a man who fears God. He's the richest person, and uh, that's the description of Job. And when we look uh, verse 6 to 12, we know, the conversation between God and Satan, isn't it? And uh, when we read verse 13, from 13 till uh, 19, we see the darkest valley that Job had gone through. Verse 13, one day, when Job's sons and daughters were feasting and drinking wine at the oldest brother's house, a messenger came to Job and said, the oxen were plowing and the donkeys were gazing nearby. And the shavens attacked and made off with them. They put the servants to sword and I am the only one who escaped to tell you this. Servant number one. While he was still speaking, the second guy have come. Another messenger came and said, the fire of God fell from the heavens and burnt up the sheep and the servants. And I am the only one who have escaped to tell you. While he was still speaking, the third person comes now. The Chaldeans uh, uh, formed three raiding parties and swiped up down uh, your camels and made off with them. They put the servants to the sword and I am the only one who escaped to tell you. While he was still speaking, now the fourth person comes. This is terrible. This is terrible news for him. While he was still speaking, yet another messenger came and said, your sons and daughters were feasting and drinking. Uh, wine at the oldest brother's house when suddenly a mighty wind uh, 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 came from the desert and struck the four corners of the house. It collapsed on them and they are dead. And I'm the only person who escaped to tell you. Within the blink of his eye, he lost his wealth. He lost his children. So let me remind you that troubles are, in, are, in, are, are unpredictable. So that's why we don't plan for it, better prepare for it to face those problems. 
This is truth number two. The third truth is this. They are impartial. They are impartial. Matthew chapter 5 verse 45 says that you may be children of your father in heaven. He causes his son to raise on the evil and the good and sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. So God is not a partial God. At the same way, our problems, our troubles, our deepest valleys are also not, uh, 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 not partial. They are impartial. That means God causes his son and raise to the evil and the good, to the righteous and the unrighteous. So in that case, we should not complain to God, why me? So God is not partial and rather troubles are also not. But most of the time we complain to God and you know, or feel sad when we go through the valley. We say, why me? Why not him? Why not, why not you know, the other person? Why me? Better we need to accept them than complaining. This is uh, the truth number three. And fourthly, the valley experience are temporary. The valley experience are temporary. Even though when I walk through the valley of darkness, I will fear no evil. We need to remember that every valley that we exit, every valley when you exit, and it, any, any tunnel that you exit, there should, be, uh, there should be an exit. When you enter, there should be an exit, isn't there? So the problem where you are struggling with right now, you should be having or seeing a solution for the problem. So it's not a permanent location. That's a season. We need to remember that. It's not a permanent location, but it's a season that we go through. The problems or trials or, pro or the troubles that we uh, are going, it's a season. That's it. Troubles are temporary. Joy is eternal. How many of you believe it? Troubles are temporary and joy is eternal. This is the, the truth number four. And fifthly, the valley experiences are purposeful. The problems that we go through, every problem, there is a purpose that God has placed. So God, God always has a very special purpose for every deepest valley uh, that we you know, go through. First Peter chapter you know, 1 verse uh, 7 says, these have come to that, uh, the proven genuineness of your faith. Okay, before we read verse 7, let me read verse 6. In, in, in all this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while you may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. Peter says, for a little while, as I, as I told you, there are temp those experiences are temporary. For a short time, it may look like a long time for us, but they are, they are only temporary for a, for, a, for a meanwhile. Though now for a little while you may, f you may uh, have had to suffer grief and all kinds of trials. Why? Because all these have come so that the proven genuineness of your, of your faith uh, for greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire. So, to increase our faith, to increase you know, our, our, our faith life, sometimes God allows us to go walk through the valley of darkness. So, five truths that we have you know, looked into. Number one, valley experiences are inevitable. They are unpredictable. They are, impar they are impartial. They are temporary. And they are purposeful. So, let's... Uh, See how David responded to these valley experiences. You know, we know David's life, isn't it? From a couple of weeks, we are studying about uh, David, David's life and, you know, his flaws and how God restored him. As a king, he was, you know, he failed as a king, isn't it? He, he committed uh, you know, you know, something that uh, a guy like David shouldn't do it, but he did. And also, as a father, he failed to correct discipline his children. His own son, Absalom, have turned against him 
and plotted against him to, you know, uh, to kill him. And also his, his, uh, uh, no, uh, his, his, his uncle Saul also wanted to kill him. So he was, at, at, at one point he was all alone, rejected, and, uh, and, uh, no, and, and, and we know how he failed as a king, as a father. But still, he, the way he responded to the valley is, is amazing. Let me give you three important uh, you know, lessons that we need to remember as we walk through the valley of darkness, uh, darkness in our lives. The problems may look like darkest valley in your life. Number one, David decided not to be afraid. He decided not to be afraid. Even though when I walk through the valley of darkness, I will fear no evil. Fear always blinds our faith, you know, in believing God. And, uh, and, and David says, even though when I walk through, he didn't say when I run through. But we wanted to run through our problems. We, wanted to, we want quick solutions. We, want, we don't want to stay in the troubleness. We, want, we, we just want God to do something very urgently. But no, when you walk through the darkness, David decided not to be afraid. So coming out of problems takes time. But during the journey of the valley, we will you know, experience nice, amazing lessons out of you know, uh, those experiences. David decided not to be afraid of. I don't know what are your fears in your life. I don't know what is scaring you, bothering you this morning. But let me tell you something that uh, you know, Jesus says, cast all your burdens unto me. I will give you rest. If you are restless, peaceless, let me encourage you that do not be afraid because God whom you are serving this morning is with us all the time because he is our shepherd. And, uh, you know, the second uh, response that, you know, uh, David responded is that he recognized that God is with him. He recognized that God is with him. When we look the first three verses of this chapter, David is talking about God. Isn't it? First three verses, he talks about God. How he's, uh, he, he, he compared God as a shepherd and how he uh, takes to the green pastures and lies down in the uh, in, a, in, a, in a nice place, and then all those things. And after the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth, David starts to speaking to God. He started speaking about God, and he started, and, and, and uh, in the fourth words, he starts speaking to God. When David starts speaking to God, he got peace, and all his fear has gone away. I encourage you to, to start speaking to God. Rather than speaking to the problems, rather than speaking to the situations, sp start speaking to God. And God will give you rest and also give you a way out of uh, you know, the problems or the valleys that you go through. Um, so the shepherd certainly did not remove the presence of evil, but remo removed the fear of, of evil. So God's presence... You know, you know, removed the fear that David had. You know, uh, 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 I just want to give you one one illustration. It's not an illustration; it's actually happened. Me, along with my family, I went to a wedding, uh, which is uh, you know in the interior part of a village, and we had to stay there, you know, that one night. And uh, you know, at uh, in villages, washrooms are a little far from house. Isn't it? We need to walk little you know, distant and then we'll, we have to use the washrooms there and come back. So one night my daughter woke me up 2 a.m. in the morning and she asked me to come to the washroom. And uh, we both went and I asked her to go inside and switch on the light. And I was leaning on the wall and sleeping. It's 2 a.m. in the morning. So we noticed that there was a power cut. And my daughter started screaming out, Daddy! And I said, don't worry, I'm there. I'm standing right 
beside the door. Do not be afraid. I'm there. And then she started speaking to me when, whether I'm there. She's confirming whether I'm there or not. And then uh, I told, don't worry. Finish your work and come. I'm there only. So uh, that thing actually, you know, uh, it's, it's very relevant to the topic that we are discussing. My daughter is still in the presence of darkness, but she knows that I am there as a father, standing beside. Or she knows that I am there. So your problems, your worries may look like you are in the darkest valley, but we need to remember that we have the presence of God is always with us. Do not be afraid. Isaiah chapter 43 verse 2. God is giving a wonderful promise to all of us. Do not fear for I have redeemed you. I have summed you my, uh, by name and you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you and you will pass through. And when you pass through the rivers, they will not swipe you over you. When you walk through the fire, when you walk through the fire, the flames will not set you blaze. That's a wonderful promise. So the protection and comfort we have in the presence of God is so amazing. So God does not eliminate the risk, but he illuminates his presence. That's so wonderful. So we will still experience those kind of darkness in our life, but he will you know, illuminate his presence. The light shines the brightest in the dark. And uh, uh, Jesus is the light of the world. And he's our light. That's response number two. And thirdly, uh, let's see how David responded to you know, his darkest uh, valley. David recognized that God is trustworthy. Even though when I walk through the valley of darkness, I will feel no evil because your rod and your staff will comfort me. So he believed and he recognized that God is trustworthy. Let's uh, look how Job also responded to his deepest, darkest valley. So now all the four uh, servants have come with the bad news. And if I come to you and say and tell you that you have lost your job, you have lost your wealth, and, and you have lost someone who loved you. What would the common reaction that we you know, show? We, we cry, we shout, we grieve, we, we, we sometimes you know, uh, mock God. Why me, God? What have I done? But see the Job's response. At, at this, so after the fourth uh, messenger have come, Job got up and tore his robe and shaved his head. Then he fell to the ground in worship. Oh man, that's amazing. He fell down and he did what? He worshipped God. And said, naked I have come from my mother's womb and, and naked I will depart. The Lord, have, the Lord gave and the Lord has taken away. It is very easy for us to sing, blessed be your name, God. You give and you take away. It's very easy for us to sing. But actually, Job has meant what we have sung. And also, as we continue to read, may the name of the Lord be praised in all this. After the news, after you know, he, he reacted, in all these, Job did not sin by charging God with wrongdoing. He did not, he did not mock, he did not you know, curse God, but, but he worshipped him. Someone should have guts to do that, isn't it? But Job did it. That's why God is so sure and uh, had this conversation with Satan, you whatever you do, Job will not curse me. He will not turn away from me. Later, as we study this book, uh, Job also goes into very pathetic situation. He's, he's, he, 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 he uh, what do you say? 
He lost his property. He lost his wealth. He lost his children. He also uh, lost his health. You know, even dogs come and lick the wounds of his body. And three of his friends and his wife comes to him, comes to him and tell, why the hell are you living on this earth? Just curse God and die. That's the suggestion gave, gave, I've given my friends and his wife. But still, as you read the whole uh, book, you will see Job will never, ne ever, you know, you know, uh, mocked God and cursed God, but still he worshiped. And, and also we will see how God lifts him up again and gives him all what he have lost. He believed that God is trustworthy. And, uh, and uh, you know, let me tell you some uh, this. Our problems may look like shadows. Shadows are bigger than reality, isn't it? Yes? See, you can see my shadow, right? It is bigger than our the reality. David decided not to be afraid of looking at the shadows because that's not reality. Today, I don't know if you're scared of looking at the problems, and that is not reality. Shadows will never hurt us, but it increases the fear in us. Uh, so uh, David decided not to be afraid of looking at the shadow. And also, uh, sometimes God will help us or, uh, you know, God will make us a channel of blessing to others or to stand along with someone who is going through the deepest valley and help them, encourage them if you are willing to do that. Not only God helps us, but also enables us to be a helping to others, to experience those, to share those experiences, how God has you know, delivered you out of those kind of valleys and uh, that encourages others, helps others to come out of those kind of valleys. May God give you that, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, that blessing to be a great channel of blessing to others. So he decided not to be afraid, and he recognized that uh, 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 he's in the God's presence, and he also recognized that God is trustworthy. So this morning I encourage you to trust him, no matter what. No matter how deepest valley that you go through, no matter how you see your friends or colleagues or someone who is struggling, I want you to help them to trust God and believe Him that He's gonna uh, help them. How He rescued us, He's gonna help others also. Will you do that? Yes. Amen. So we have a good shepherd who is with us, and we are His sheep, and we. I know that's, that's, that verse talks about so many things. I, uh, John chapter 10, uh, verse uh, 17. I, I know my sheep, and they will listen to my voice. And I know them. When we choose to listen to his voice, this is the promise that God has given to us. I will give them eternal life, and nobody can ever snatch them out of me. So the problem is we don't listen to the voice of God. The problem is we don't believe in uh, the miracles that God is going to do in our lives. But when we trust him and believe him, God is going to take you out. If there is a way in, there is a way out. So may God uh, bless you and help you to come out of those valleys. Let's pray. Thank you, Jesus. Let's uh, take time to reflect on uh, what have been shared this morning. Whatever valleys that you're going through in your life, the problems or trials or, or uh, situations that you uh, cannot overcome, I pray that uh, May God will help you to come out of those valleys. Not only you, but you can also be a great, you know, you use you as a wonderful vessel for people, those who are struggling like that. As a source of blessing. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. As, as worship team comes and, you know, leads us into a time of worship, I want you to reflect on 
on the word and you know he's our good shepherd thank you jesus father we want to thank you once again for speaking to our hearts speaking to me god and uh, thank you for your word and we believe that god that every one of us have to go through this tough situation tough times in our lives god and they are inevitable and they are unpredictable god we better plan for it than we 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 better prepare for it than planning for how to face these kind of problems and trials thank you jesus thank you lord um give us courage and strength to overcome all the problems father god thank you jesus and your word says god that in this world that we will face troubles but you have overcome the world god oh what a great assurance that we have in you jesus thank you jesus christ thank you jesus let's take time to worship our god Thank you Jesus. Yes God, we ask you to never let go of us God. And we believe that your presence will go with us wherever we are. In the deepest valley that we go through, we believe that you are with us. Your presence is with us God. We thank you once again for speaking to our hearts God. And we thank you for your word. In Jesus name I pray. Amen.